Welcome back. So if you remember last time I was having a Brit weld up a bunch of things for us and this is one of the things that was the exhaust tube for the rocket for the parachute. So that one's done. I just need to install that in the aircraft now. And this is the cross brace there for the intake scoop. And that's got to get drilled now, match drilled to the holes on the sides and um, bolted into place. And that way we can hook it up to the linear actuator and I think we're actually going to hook it up now and have it ready and not sure if we'll use it but I just want to have it done. It's much more difficult to do it later on. So there's the tray that it sits in so I'm going to be cutting out a hole in the middle there where those little um, ears are and the actuator can uh, connect to that and go sort of downwards and onto the back bulkhead. And uh, there's the tow bar that uh, Devin cut all the pieces for and Britt did a nice job welding that up. So uh, this is how it sort of fits there on that little uh, toe pin that we put on the front of the gear. And I can't really do much with it right now because the um, aircraft is sitting on the blocks. And the nose gear sort of locks into place when it's fully extended so it's, it's always pointing forward. It's not until it gets some weight on it that it, that it can actually um, turn it left and right. And Jeff's been bonding together a few different things. So these are the uh, little extensions there for the doors for the strakes. And so he's got the inner ribs uh, bonded into the outer shell. And ultimately they'll get bonded onto the doors. And then these are the uh, upper elevator skins. So he's put the center section in there uh, for where the actuator is connecting to that. To um, you know move it up and down or back and forth. So there's the other one done as well, and that's all uh, setting up in there. And uh, here's the bell cranks that I had um, Brit weld up. Uh, these are the new ones. We replaced the aluminum ones with 4130 just to, to be uh, a little bit more rigid. And so, uh, yeah, there's the other one, and Devin's just giving those a quick um, paint job. And there's the rocket uh, exhaust tube there. So I've got that installed in place now and sort of couple of screws on the tabs there holding it at the top and then it just goes through that hole and I've um, cut it off to suit there and we're going to put as someone suggested just put a big white sticker over there at the end or a sticker or whatever we end up painting the, the aircraft with ultimately and so here's the parachute strap so these are all the straps there the two coming off the roof and then one coming from the left hand side gear leg and the other one coming from the right hand side gear leg and those are all uh, hooked into that big carabiner and then finally there's also um, that just needs to be pulled tight there so those those four are hooked into the big carabiner and then there's two actual straps that come off of the the chute pack so there they are there and they're hooked into the carabiner as well so you guys saw it all here I've hooked it up correctly because I've heard stories of uh, people not hooking it up correctly and the chute goes out but then it's not attached to anything and I don't think it's in an aircraft but other people with regular parachutes uh, anyway so I did some more work on the gear and uh, this is it retracting here and there's a little duck waddle <laughs> so and you know we've talked about it, a bunch of us have talked about it and I don't think there's anything you can do about it because the problem is everything sort of teed off of one line and uh, the problem is, you know, one side gets a little bit heavy and then the, the fluid is allowed to flow back to the other side. And, you know, you can't um, put these things in series because if you did, one gear would always go up first and then the next one and then the next one, which wouldn't be ideal either. We want them to be fairly symmetrical. And there you see it's basically doing that. And I've got the dump mechanism sorted out. So here, this is, I'm going around there to just open the dump valve and you see it sort of half brings the gear down but the actual um, pump system has kind of like a little locking valve in it and you just have to touch it with a tiny bit of power and it'll release and then the gear will dump down which is what I'm about to do here and there it goes down and locks into place and I've got that hooked uh, to the backup battery system so even if your main you lose your main power or the breaker goes or something like that you can always do that um, there will be some power on the on the backup battery just enough to go and uh, release that little valve and I'm just up the back there just checking to make sure that it's gone over center and uh, after you know a little bit of 
tuning and tweaking for several hours on uh, what was it Wednesday or Thursday um, I'm pretty happy with the way it's working right now and it goes up uh, smoothly and it goes down smoothly without you know too much clunking and and or you know too much strain so uh, yeah that's that's one more job pretty much out of the way I'm fairly confident that uh, the gear is going to do what it needs to do. So remaining on the gear still, we still have to um, make some little hinges for the nose gear doors and then attach um, those. And then uh, we have to make some mounting brackets for the main gear doors to mount them to the legs and uh, get those attached. And that's pretty much everything for the gear. Um, apart from maybe just the indicator switches to indicate that the gear is up and locked. So as you can see I had a little bit of time so I decided uh, now that the engine's off just to pull apart the redrive really quickly and just see how it wore on those uh, journal bearings just for the little bit five minutes we were running it and uh, everything looked okay there's obviously some wearing in there but that's what's supposed to happen not sure if it's exactly supposed to happen like that but uh, I was quite happy with it and Jeff didn't seem to see any real problems there and uh, same on the other side and you're looking there at the front at the thrust uh, bearings and they seem to be wearing uh, okay and the little oil rings didn't have a problem either um, so yeah and it's also loosened up as well uh, but I did notice there that it seemed like the oil was leaking past the little thin o-ring that the one that's in the sort of dovetail channel and uh, maybe it's just not as thick as it needs to be so anyway what I did was I put some more um, just a gasket maker in there and it squeezed out all the way around when I uh, tightened everything up and talked it all again so uh, hopefully we don't get any uh, any leaking coming out of it because that's I think that's what happened it just basically leaked past those o-rings and uh, back over on the four plane and the elevator so Jeff's got this uh, linkage hooked up to that uh, new bell crank now if you look there on the inclin inclinometer we have a uh, 14.7 degrees uh, from zero that's up and uh, and then down is uh, 29.5 there 29.6 so we have 45 degrees of travel and that's what I had specced out in the CAD so it seems like this is going to work out okay and uh, Mark's a little bit concerned about the angles and stuff coming off everything but uh, you know I don't think there's any major problems that we can't figure out uh, so here I'm working on the next problem which is basically getting the air conditioning system the wiring in the back all sorted out and at the same time just cleaning up a few things and labeling the relays and that sort of stuff and the fuses and just uh, tidying up just some of the wiring there that was a little bit um, messy and also checking just to make sure that um, the circuitry that I'm doing for the AC is uh, going to work correctly sort of unit testing as much as I can uh, because how it's working is you know we've got the AC unit up front in the cabin that, that sends a, a signal down which is a pull to ground and I need it to switch that through a relay there and then that basically um, pulls a high to 12 volts that goes through this little trinary switch which only switches on when there's pressure in the system or vacuum in the system and then it goes to the ECU and then the ECU says okay I need to basically power up the compressor so um, there's a you know, bunch of different things the way that's wired and also too there's the fans that come off there and there's you know circuit or uh, um, fuses for that and, and re uh, relays for running the fans so Anyway, a bunch of wiring and stuff that had to be done and unit testing there and, uh, you know, putting some connectors on and just cleaning everything up. So that's pretty much uh, what I ended up doing um, for most of the day, which was today, actually, Friday. And uh, But it, by the end of the day, I had it pretty much sorted out. So um, anyway, right now, here's what I'm doing, just putting um, a four um, pin D, uh, Deutsch connector, one of the DTM connectors on the trinary switch and you know I'm not fully um, versed on what the trinary switch is but from what I can tell it um, it hooks onto the dryer the AC dryer and I believe it um, you can see the four wires coming off there's two blues and then two green blacks and so what it does is basically close the two blues together and the two green blacks together when everything's good 
in the AC system and it disconnects those things when it's not so it's kind of like a fail safe type thing just to make sure that you know the AC is not going to run if it's not charged correctly at least I believe that's how it works so I'm put, putting a, a four pin connector on there so it's really easy just to pull that whole thing out um, because it has the the, the trying to switch is, is just like a little valve that bolts into the top of that thing and then you have uh, the AC line one runs in one runs out of it and the dryer itself you need to be able to change those because they can go bad or whatever in fact the one that we have there is just it's been exposed for way too long we've had it sort of in there testing so I actually bought a new one it's just like 30 bucks and uh, I've got the new one on standby for when we actually put everything in so right now I'm just mocking all this one up because I believe when it gets too much uh, humidity or moisture or whatever in, into it it just doesn't work as well so you've got to keep it sealed up until you're ready to actually um, you know get your system completely um, plumbed and and ready to to uh, charge so I put that connector on there and then a matching connector uh, on the um, the wiring harness and of course you know one line goes to ground and then uh, a one the other line go the other side of that one goes to the relay which triggers the two um, electric fans that are on the condenser and then there's the two other lines that basically kind of like go in between um, the AC system up front and then the, the trigger that tells the ECU to turn on the uh, on the compressor so it just kind of acts like a you know a, a remote switch to decide you know whether or not the system is able to run so a bunch of uh, you know just messing with that and putting the connectors on and r running the wiring through to the ECU and then a line back out from the ECU over to the compressor and then putting the, um, the a new connector onto uh, the line that hooks up to the compressor and then running that inside the rest of the harness so it's neat and tidy and then putting the wire loom that black plastic loom back on everything and uh, tidying it all up again and uh, so yeah just ends up taking half a day or more actually I think I spent pretty much the whole day on this this one job so but you know in the end I got it all done and uh, so my list of things now is getting shorter by the day i have still got to do a couple of things in the cabin that new um, that new connector for the pressurization system inside the cabin will be arriving on Monday so I'll be able to put that on and then once that's on I can close up the rest of the, the panel in the front and then uh, we're probably going to bond the front seats in at that point I didn't we didn't do them this week and uh, then what else I've got to do is start working on those gear doors and get those sorted out uh, finish off the intake tray and uh, I don't know <laughs> I still got a bunch of things on my list but they're all sort of small things um, I've still got things on my list like you know after high-speed taxiing doing uh, you know checks on everything we'll be pulling apart the redrive again just to have a look in there once we've really been able to run it hard um, in taxiing and also be doing you know oil change and probably a fuel filter change and there's all kinds of different things um, that we need to do but uh, my goal right now is to try and get the aircraft out of the shop here um, probably within four weeks time and uh, move it up to the airport and as I said before just you know, we're going to just use a couple of forklifts there to lift it up on its nose and slide it out the door I'll lift it up by its nose, not on its nose. <laughs> that would be funny. Uh, lift it up by the nose and slide it out the door sideways and then uh, tow it up uh, to the airport. And I need to talk to the manager up there, airport manager again, and just make sure he's got space for us. He's promised me that he would absolutely have space. So I'm going to hold him to his word. So now I'm just putting that last four pin uh, DTM connector onto the wiring harness there and uh, I, I really like using these connectors they're so simple to use the pins come out really easy uh, if you want to change something out and it, everything goes together really easy they're fully waterproof 
and uh, they're not too finicky. You can put all sorts of different size wires in there and not worry about things getting jammed in there. You don't need any special removal tools or installation tools to put them together. And they're actually fairly, um, you know, cost effective. They're not, you know, overly pricey in terms of, um, you know, compared to some of the other connectors we use. So um, really enjoy using those ones. I bought these other ones as well that were kind of more automotive ones and they're larger and clunky and and uh, I just I never used any of them just because I didn't like them unfortunately you know I bought a bunch of these DTM ones Deutsch ones ahead of time and I think I've got like you know two or three left is all so I've used pretty much everything that I ended up buying because um, I had you know ones that were two pin and ones with three pin and ones that were four pin and so this was um, these were the last of the four pin ones that I had except I think I've got one one more and I got one more three pin um, so anyway that's uh, that job out of the way with all the AC lines done now all I got to do there is just tidy up that uh, wiring harness and there uh, just to show you I did label the six different uh, relays there and also uh, put the label for the fuses inside the cover there so I remember what they all are and what they do and what size they need to be if they blow out or whatever. And most of them are kind of doubling up, but uh, that's the way Dan wired originally. A little bit weird, but anyway, works. Um, so here's the engine just showing you again that I did put the redrive back in it after I disassembled it. And uh, um, with respect to that firewall, I have ordered some fiber fracks that some people had recommended and Jeff said he'd used it before. So I'll be probably installing that on that um, on the rear bulkhead there that you're looking at, or the firewall. And uh, so there you can see now I've tidied everything up and got all the um, the wire loom back on everything. I haven't um, put any electrical tape around anything yet, just got the loom sort of on there loose. Just in case I have to add another wire at the last minute for some reason. Um, and here you can see I'm actually just cutting out these brackets here, well not even brackets, they're just spacers, that's quarter inch thick aluminum and uh, after we had the engine on and we realized that that firewall was too low one of the things we did we we had to space out the um, engine mount from the firewall just on the bottom there and we just used um, you know some scrap bits of aluminum initially a quarter inch thick so here I'm making these and, and I've drilled the holes there obviously but I need to cut those out and uh, here you can see Jeff has got the little slots and stuff and the little access panel cut out now for the lower skins for both of the elevators so they're pretty much ready I think now or almost ready to be bonded on to the uh, rest of the elevator the you know the upper skin and the ribs so getting close to um, being able to finish the elevator once those are finished um, we don't have too much more to do for uh, the four plane I've just got to uh, put the pedo tube in and um, the magnetometer in and, and close that out as well so uh, not too much more to do with respect to the four plane and there's the uh, upper skins you can see those are slotted there for the elevators and uh, here's those um, those uh, little strake extensions for the doors now that they've all cured up and uh, they were as you saw earlier on they were bonded together with a little bit of high sole and just to show you how that's going to fit in there on the left hand side of the aircraft this is just going to be bonded onto the door just like that and uh, so when the door opens up it just goes with the door that just kind of completes the whole thing there and I'm just holding it rough there it's not perfectly aligned but uh, yeah it should look good when it's all done and finally now that the aircraft is back on its gear again even though I've got the dolly on the nose wheel there here's the uh, little tow bar again so if I hook that up and I actually just earlier pulled down on the front of the aircraft and so it's actually compressed that nose strut a little bit maybe an inch so if I just hook that on you can see now I can actually steer the nose wheel like that it's obviously rotating on the dolly but um, it is steerable now so towable and steerable so anyway uh, that's our update for the second half of this week uh, next week we'll be doing uh, more stuff for the four plane and, um, and the firewall and other goodies so Tune in again on Tuesday and uh, see what we're up to. And thanks again for watching. Mm -hmm.